Around the year 2000, we began a study of military training impacts on streams at Fort Benning, Georgia. This turned into a six-year project involving Jeff Hauser, Brian Roberts, and Jack Feminella, Kelly Maloney, and the rest of the Auburn stream team. Our studies examined streams draining wetlands with, a, with a, over a gradient of disturbance levels resulting from track vehicle maneuver areas. And as you can see from the photos of Brian and Kelly on the upper right, an important requirement for this work was the ability to lug heavy stuff in the field, something that of course I was unqualified for. So Jeff published a paper showing the negative impacts of increasing watershed disturbance on stream metabolism, primarily due to lower benthic organic matter and coarse woody debris in more highly disturbed streams. Jeff also published a paper on water quality impact showing a strong relationship between the fraction of the watershed that's disturbed and the concentration of suspended sediments, nitrate, and phosphate, particularly during storms. Brian published a paper showing that increasing disturbance level resulted in lower nutrient uptake rates, and that stream restoration involving coarse woody debris addition increased nutrient uptake and transient storage. Brian also has a paper that will be coming, hopefully be coming out soon, showing that metabolism rates are increased with coarse woody debris addition, although this improvement lasts for only a year or two if high rates of erosion are not prevented within the catchment. Uh, in 2004, Brian Roberts, Walter Hill, and I began a study that built from the earlier metabolism studies initiated by Eric Marzoff about 10 years uh, earlier. We began measuring metabolism continuously in Walker Branch and using a relationship that Brian developed between discharge and reiteration rates, which, were, which was developed from salt propane injections at different discharges, Brian was able to calculate daily metabolism over a two-year period. In his Heinz award-winning uh, paper published in Ecosystem, Brian showed distinct seasonal patterns and effects of storms on metabolism. Interestingly, Although storms depressed gross fire production for about a week, respiration rates were increased for several days, probably due to the input of or fresh organic matter from riparian areas. In a subsequent paper published in JGR, Brian also showed that metabolism and nutrient uptake rates were highly coupled in Walker Branch, with high rates of metabolism explaining the high rates of nutrient uptake during early spring due to high rates of gross primary production, and in autumn due to high rates of respiration associated with leaf decomposition. And in a paper published in Ecology, Walter showed how productivity of the dominant consumer, the snail Elymia, closely tracked the spring algal bloom and autumn leaf input, indicating a strong cat trophic cascade in Walker Branch. Well, we began weekly measurements of stream chemistry in Walker Branch back about 1989. So there are now, we now have over a 20-year record of stream chemistry. And this data set begged for some time series analysis that could identify patterns, trends, and potential controlling factors. 
However, being as statistically, statistically challenged as, as many of you know that I am, I was not the guy to do this. Fortunately, about this time, I began a collaboration with Emily Bernhardt and her PhD student, Brian Lutz, and Brian took on this challenge. Brian fitted this multiple regression model that included terms for trend over time, discharge, both current and antecedent, and two sine-cosine functions to account for phenological events associated with spring peaks and outer growth, fall peaks and microbial uptake associated with litter decomposition. And he fitted this model to the weekly stream chemistry data. The plot in the lower left corner shows the relative contributions of the different model terms and explaining variation in the concentration of different solutes. Trends with time were relatively weak for all solutes. Variation in some solutes, such as calcium, magnesium, and sulfate, was primarily accounted for by discharge, both current and antecedent. However, variation in important biological nutrients, such as nitrate and phosphate, was primarily accounted for by the sine-cosine terms representing in-stream phenological events. Nitrate concentration was particularly dynamic as indicated by the plots on the right. Variation in nitrate concentration was strongly influenced by multi-year droughts, as indicated by the large antecedent discharge effect. That's the um, fairly large gray bar about the middle of the plot there. Variation in nitrate concentration was also strongly influenced by asymmetrical seasonality due to phenological events associated with high in-stream uptake by algae in spring, very low uptake by su in summer due to the lack of light and other resources, and high uptake by microbes during leaf de decomposition in the autumn. And on the far right, an analysis of model residuals indicated that year-to-year -year var variation in the size and timing of events, such as scouring floods in the fall and spring, multi-year droughts, and the timing of leaf out in the forest canopy in spring can have large effects on nitrate concentration in the stream by altering in-stream uptake rates. So this brings me to the end of my talk. I want to thank the sponsors who have funded my research over the years, including DOE, NSF, EPRI, and CERDIP. I also want to thank the many outstanding students and postdocs and great colleagues who I've had the privilege of working with. I know I've neglected to mention in this talk, many of you who have been valued contributors and collaborators over the years. But that's only because it would have lasted many hours, and I know everyone is probably ready for the mixer that I think may be following this talk. I appreciate the help of Natalie Griffiths, my current postdoc, who's continuing the tradition of helping me with computer applications and taking on much of the work uh, involving uh, the, my various research, ongoing projects. I also want to particularly thank Jack Webster, who has been a mentor, a colleague, a co-author, and often a NABS meeting roommate over these years. And finally, I'd like to thank my wife, Kathy, children, Anna, Rick, and Joe, son-in-law, Ty, and my grandson, Charlie, for their support and willingness to put up with my ramblings on stream ecology 
without rolling their eyes too much. Thank you.